needs an HD re-release. Hey, Crystal Maiden here, and this is Wind Waker on the GameCube. That's right, I'm not going to be showing off the HD version. I mean, like, it has a couple gameplay improvements, and I guess that does make it the better game, but I, I don't like how overly saturated, like, the, the bloom effect is. The characters just kind of look weird with the self-shaded art style having the realistic lighting on it. I know, it's a... I know it's kind of nitpicky, because, like, it's a graphics thing, but also, the big reason I don't like the remake is because it doesn't do nearly enough to improve the game. It doesn't even have a bonus dungeon. I mean, even A Link to the Past on the Game Boy Advance added a new dungeon. And Link's, Link's Awakening DX, that was a bonus dungeon, too. I don't feel like they put nearly enough effort into the remake as this game deserves. Like, it was such a giant disappointment for me. Like, when I think remake, I think there's no excuse not to fix all the problems, especially for a game this old, where everyone knows. <laughs> I love how you can name your character whatever you want. That's going to be a source of hilarity throughout the LP. But anyways, I, I just don't see what kind of excuse they had not to fix all the problems that the game had, when it's been around for so long, it's been critically analyzed so much. Like, they still have sailing, they still have the Triforce quest. What was the point? They remade it for the Wii U for a new generation of gamers. And that's, that's good and all, but... They could have done so much better. That, that's, that's why I'm showing off it in its original glory. I'd rather show off the GameCube version that I grew up with. Then it's a lot easier for me to record, because the Wii's right in my room. I've grown to kind of hate this intro because it goes on for far too long. Like, it's very good for the atmosphere. Like, it has the music, and like, it changes the music to the appropriate music at the right times. Like, you hear the heroic music playing when this picture shows up. Like, it's good exposition, basically filling us in on the events of Ocarina of Time and what happened afterwards if you didn't play that game, which I never did. I mean, I got to Goron Mines, or no, it's called the Dongo's Cavern in that game. And I just sort of, I just lost interest. Like, I don't think Ocarina of Time does enough of a good job telling you where you're supposed to go, and it's kind of hard to tell what is on the wall that you can interact with, because it just looks like it's painted onto the wall, every texture on it. I don't know. I just wasn't that enthusiastic about Ocarina of Time. I didn't grow up with it. I think it's a game that, because of how it's aged, you kind of have to have started out with it to really worship it like most of the fan base does. Me, I started out with, 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 with Wind Waker. This was one of the first... This was the first 3D game that I ever played. And the first 3D Zelda game I ever played. So... This was my favorite Zelda game for a pretty long time. These days I'm kind of conflicted on what Zelda game is my favorite. A Link Between Worlds might be it, but it's also got a lot of problems that annoy me about it. I'll probably go deeper into that later on, because like this is going to be a pretty long commentary, and I might run up, I might have to struggle with stuff to say. Like I've got several different pages of trivia. Like, dozens of pages, in fact. But... But yeah, like, that was a pretty atmospheric intro. It, it does a good job. I just wish it didn't go on for so long. The biggest problem with the replayability of this game is that you can't skip cutscenes. This is something that the game has not aged very well in. Especially since Sonic Adventure 2 came out in like 2001 on Dreamcast and it allowed you to skip cutscenes and this came, this game came out after that game so there's really no excuse and guess what the remake doesn't let you do that's right the remake doesn't let you skip cutscenes either and you know the, the cutscenes are fine like they're they're charming and some of them I really like and would love to watch over and over again well not 
forever, but... Like, some cutscenes I don't mind seeing again, but it's it kind of makes it tedious, like, replaying the whole entire game again, when you have to watch all of the cutscenes, and you can't skip them. Like, Twilight Princess allows you to skip cutscenes, and Skyward Sword does too. I don't know what was so hard about just letting you skip cutscenes with the start button. No, you have to watch our glorious cutscenes, damn it, every time you play the game, because they're perfect. I mean, the, obviously the cutscene presentation is much better than in the original Sonic Adventure games. But, th like, that that's partially because they don't have voice acting. Well, sort of. They have voice clips. And the voice clips are not exactly good with the acting. It wasn't until Breath of the Wild that they really tried to have proper voice acting for all of the dialogue. And a lot of people say that the voice acting sucks, and some say that it's really good. It sounds to me like a Sonic Adventure situation, where some people like the voice acting and others complain about it. Like, I liked the voice acting in the adventure games, but... So this is Ariel. She's a pretty charming character. I think it's a little forced how she... How she calls it Ariel's Lookout as a... Like, like the way that it's handled. Naming the place. I mean... The, this place has been around forever, right? Why is she acting as if... Just now, it's been discovered? Like, why is she talking as if... I like to come here a lot. I call it Ariel's Lookout. Like, wouldn't it have been here for the entire time that they've been alive? Like, I don't know. It's like a kind of forced way to tell you what her name is, when you could just have the grandma mention her name. You don't have to know what her name is right away. I don't know, that's just a little nitpick I have. But Ariel's pretty charming, pretty sweet. She's not annoying, like she's not an annoying little sister. She's not spoiled or anything. And another charming character is the grandma. Although I think she's way too short. Like, like, Link is supposed to be like 11 or 10 or something. And the grandma's shorter than her, than him. Like, is, is the grandma a little person or something? I know that old age makes you short, but I guess it's the art style, but still. It does make sense that Link would be kind of I guess... Well, I don't know. Maybe they consider the tunic to be an old-fashioned sort of thing to wear. Especially since they comment on how it looks too warm for this weather. And, like, they live in a tropical island area. So, I guess he considers it to be old-fashioned, and most people don't wear that stuff anymore. I mean, to, when you look at it, the characters do all seem to be... They all seem to be dressed in a pretty casual, kind of modern sort of way. Aside from all of the women wearing dresses. And skirts and stuff. Like, I don't think any of the women actually wear pants. But, yeah. We, wa we walked by a woman wearing a pot on her head earlier. Her name is Sue Bell, and fans nickname her the Pot Lady, apparently. And I think you can actually break her pot, like, with later items in the game and she scolds you for it. I think she... I think she finds you for that. I don't quite remember, though. Something that was introduced in this game was the ability to crawl whenever you want. So... That's neat, I guess. In Twilight Princess, you can only crawl in front of crawling spaces, and there's only, like, one or two of those, like... I think there's- yeah, there's two. But in this game, you can crawl whenever you want, and this is mostly useless aside from allowing you to easily sneak up on and pick up the pigs. Which is only useful for getting money at this part of the game. And really- God damn it. That was annoying. But anyways, it's kind of pointless getting a whole bunch of money at this point aside from buying a certain mandatory item. Because the thing is, you have a pathetically small wallet size at this point in the game. Like, you got- you can only carry 200 rupees. What idiot thought that was a good idea? I mean, even in A Link to the Past, which was a pretty old game compared to this, 
you were allowed to carry 999 rupees right from the very beginning. You didn't have any stupid wallet upgrades. And even that wasn't large enough. This is a GameCube game. There aren't any technological limitations anymore. The largest wallet size you can get is 5,000 rupees. Like, I don't think that's nearly enough. Like, even Pokemon, a Game Boy Color game, can get you, like, nine, like, almost a million rupees. Like, like, money. That's one of the biggest problems that there is with Zelda games. Is the ridiculously tiny wallet size. Especially at the very beginning of the game. Like, so much money goes to waste. And it's just irritating. Like, you pick up a treasure chest, and all that money ends up going to waste. I'm complaining about this, but... Wind Waker is actually the one game, aside from Mishcap, that completely solves the rupee problem. Because there's so much to spend money on, and a lot of it's mandatory. Like, there's actually a huge rupee crunch later in the game. Something called the Triforce Quest, which a lot of people complain about. I'll never entirely understand that, but... I'll get into that when we get to that. But, like, yeah, this... Like, I've already hit basically the maximum amount of money I'm allowed to carry at this point in the game. And the bait bag is only 20 rupees. The bait bag is basically mandatory to beat the game because you need to use the highway pair to get one of the... to get one of the Triforce shards. The bait isn't really mandatory, it has its uses, but it's not like you need to use it. I end up buying a lot of bait over the course of the game, just for the sake of it. And you'll see what the highway pair does later. Well, it just told you, but... I'll show it later. So, this kind of shop is run by Beetle. He's kind of a quirky character. He can be annoying, but... I like his design, even though his eyes look really stupid, and like, he looks like puppet-like with his eyes. Like, I like- I love the way Link looks, and I like the way the old man looks, and the way... Is his name Orca? I, I got confused there, because I always called Link's uncle in Link's the Past, Orco. Based on this guy, so yeah, he is called Orca. I like how you can do this. Like, this adds personality to the game. Like, <laughs> like that is pretty... That is pretty amusing. It shows a, a good contrast between the two brothers. Like, one's brain and one's brawn, but none of them are really... Like, this guy is wise in his own way. They're both showing up different types of intelligence. He's wise in the sense that he's really good at fighting. Even though he's using a spear, like a fisherman's spear, how would he know what it's like to fight with a sword? Like, why is he teaching you about the sword when he's using a, a stabbing weapon? But anyways... The camera does not really adjust for that position. Like, I was holding up on the control stick, but the game thought I was do doing another attack. This is really annoying. What is the point of being able to do the sword tutorial at a point in the game where you can't get the sword and keep it? That is such a gigantic waste of your time. Why do you think that was a good idea? Oh, like, let's just do sword training for no reason whatsoever. Brilliant! I think that the combat is the best part of the game. Well, I used to think that, but now I think it's the treasure hunting aspect. Like, going to every island, finding everything, the, the sense of completion that you get from it. Like, that's why I play Zelda. The satisfaction of completing a task. And there's so many tasks to complete in this game. But the combat is a kind of fun part of the game, but I think the combat of the game has two major issues. Well, three actually. One, the sword attacks are way too weak. Either that, or the enemies desperately need to have smaller health bars. Even at the very end of the game, you can't one-shot the regular old Bokoblins. 
even if you use the spin attack. That is ridiculous. And second, about the spin attack, it's the strongest attack in the game, so naturally you're going to want to use it constantly. And you, you can use it without charging it up by just rotating the analog stick and pressing the B button. And I've actually gotten really good at that and can do it very consistently. So I constantly use the spin attack whenever I attack, but because every attack is mapped to the B button, I constantly end up using the wrong attack, especially since, and this is my third major complaint, for some stupid reason, you automatically use your weak first attack when you equip the sword when you're L-targeting. Like, I like the concept of the L-targeting. Like, it makes combat easier. I, I, I went down there because for some reason they invert the controls when you're looking around with the telescope. I don't know why they decided it was a good idea to decide to like make up be down and, and stuff like that. I always have a hard time getting this cutscene to activate, and I don't know why. And the telescope is pretty much useless except for activating this cutscene. Later you get an item that does exactly the same thing, only it does more things. This is a pretty climactic cutscene though, this is pretty cool. Very well presented. And I like the feeling it gives you. And the frantic, like the way Ariel is so worried afterwards. 